What is going on? Matt O'Leary here with another video. Today I'll be recapping Jets training camp practice. Another day in the books. Make sure to follow along on social media with me at Matt O'Leary and why for more coverage. And of course, the Just Jets podcast. You can call in, leave your reactions. We'll answer them on the show. Questions, reactions. New episode dropped earlier today where I talk about the standout guys so far from training camp. The big story today was that it was a dominant performance from the New York Jets defense. It was the defense who came to play after starting off strong defensively the first two days or so. The offense was kind of, in my opinion, at least more of the story uh, over the weekend into the early first couple of days so far during the week. But today it went it went back and flipped, however you want to say it. Uh, it went back to the side of the New York Jets defense with a dominant performance, more specifically on that defensive line. The Jets had a really, really impressive day. In fact, the offensive line had to do push ups because uh, they weren't playing up to par, which is just so training camp, so NFL football. You got to love it. The rookie, Will McDonald, stood out to me today. According to reports, he was incredibly fast off the line of scrimmage, which is really no surprise. And that's a big reason why the New York Jets wanted to draft him was because the amount of speed that he possesses on the line of scrimmage. He's quick to get off the ball. Uh, he's bendy. He's fast in his pass rushing ability uh, and just to get off the line of scrimmage and get after the quarterback is exactly what you want to see playing time is going to be the big question how much does he get uh, in his first year would not anticipate him to be a starter per se he will be utilized in the rotation last year for some context jermaine johnson was used about 25 30 percent of plays and he finished with two and a half sacks i would think will mcdonald finishes with slightly more because he is more of a pure pass rusher and Jermaine Johnson's better in you know run situations while also having some pass rush ability. Uh, so I, I would not be surprised to see him finish with maybe a little bit more sack production, but as a rotational player. And speaking of Jermaine Johnson, how could you not bring him up yet again? He has been one of the biggest stars so far in training camp and his his day was another really good one. He got after the quarterback, had a couple of uh, opportunities where they would have been sacks. They're not hitting the quarterback, so it's not like he's wrapping anybody up. But you can see when they get through that it looks like, hey, that would be a sack. Um, and, you know, the quarterback's still able to make plays and the offense still able to make plays. But what he was able to do against this poor Jets offensive line is really definitely what I would consider a, a good sign in that year two leap coming from Jermaine Johnson, who, as we mentioned yesterday, we talked about Jermaine. He was kind of the forgotten guy from that 2022 draft class. Before we get to some injury updates, just one more note. It was a pretty good Zach Wilson day. Uh, and there's been it's been a little up and down and there's been some really nice moments, but good to see Zach Wilson out there performing well. A couple of deep passes, one to Alex Erickson, the other one to Jason Brownlee, my guy fighting for wide receiver six. Uh, he was able to uncork a couple deep balls. The timing is really what's standing out. Uh, which is a good sign. Again, we're going to see when the live bullets come in, you know, the, the Hall of Fame game. I would expect to see a ton of Zach Wilson uh, in the preseason. You'd expect to see him. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is starting and you hope you don't have to see Zach Wilson, you know, at all this season unless it's in, in a blowout. And hopefully that, you know, Aaron Rodgers stays completely healthy. But whether I've said this before on the channel, but I'll mention it again, whatever side of the aisle you find yourself on with Zach Wilson, whether you want to keep him and continue to develop him or to trade him, you should be rooting for Zach Wilson to continue to progress and get better. Because number one, if you're on the side, you want to keep him and see what he is and develop him behind Aaron Rodgers. Well, great. Him performing better is is good. That's a good thing, obviously. And if you want to move him, he's only going to increase his value by playing better and specifically, you know, playing in, in these preseason games. It's going to matter for him. So uh, I'm happy to see that he's trending in the right direction there. OK, now for the injuries. Makai Becton's knee wasn't up for it today, according to head coach Robert Sala. He had a tough day yesterday, gave up a couple of sacks came out and really was not involved at all today. He was off to the side working on some things, although he did go up in the in the push-ups or up-downs, whatever they did, what they were doing uh, as punishment, the offensive line for their play against the defensive line. Uh, not you know, ideal, but as I mentioned yesterday, that was his first live practice back in a long, long time. He hasn't played a ton of football over the last couple of years, so they're probably going to take it slow uh, with him and you know we'll, we'll see what happens there 
Uh, he's listed as, as I said, day to day. So we'll see if he's in tomorrow, what the plan is and all that stuff. But for me, I'm just, I'm, I'd rather them take it slow with him because supposedly one of his issues was his knee wasn't feeling great and he felt like he was rushed and, you know, trying to play out of position at right tackle and he gets hurt. So I'm, ho I'm hoping that he can stay healthy and then he'll be okay for the start of the season. But that's why you draft Max Mitchell, Carter Warren, and why you also, you know, bring in a guy like Billy Turner for depth. So uh, the Jets are prepared. If worst case scenario, he is not able to go to start the season. Lastly, JFM had to leave uh, briefly with trainers. He did walk back onto the field, did not return to practice, but good sign that he came back. Some groin tightness there listed as day to day. It might cost him a day or two but not overly concerned about that one. Um, obviously, JFM is a really big part of this team. They like to play him outside on the edge. They could also kick him inside. Still, three years later, one of the more underrated players on this team and around the league as well, a really solid, steady piece to this rotation, a guy that I really like a lot and I'm looking forward to seeing in 2023. So hopefully nothing major there. I'm not all that concerned with JFM or really Makai Becton yet at this point, but those are really the two injury notes, uh, and both of those guys are listed as day-to-day. -day. So those are my takeaways from today's practice. Sound off in the comments below. What, what are your takeaways? What did you think of practice today? Let me know. Get after me on socials. Please make sure to subscribe. Give a like. That stuff really helps. It's free to support. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm Matt. I'll catch you next time.